What was intended as Brandon Lee's star-making role in The Crow became his final performance. The tragedy left the filmmakers wondering whether to finish the picture, and if they did, how would audiences accept it? The Crow is a surreal thriller about a rock musician who comes back from the dead to avenge his and his fiancé's murders. But the filming took an ominous turn on March 31st, 1993. Star Brandon Lee was accidentally killed after he was struck by a bullet from an improperly loaded stunt gun. You're him, huh? The Avenger. The killer of killers. I just want him. Nobody wanted to finish the film after the accident. Um, uh, until uh, Brandon's mother, Linda Lee, and Eliza, his, uh, his fiance, said, you know, Brandon really loved this character. He was totally enthusiastic about this movie. Would you please finish it as, like, a tribute to him? You didn't say goodbye. You're just going to have to forgive me for that. After shutting down production for two months, The Crow was completed. Except for special effects and model sequences, Nearly all the scenes had been filmed before the accident. The time really gave us a period to reflect upon what had occurred, and it also gave the director, Alex Proyas, a time to get his head together. Everybody gathered up their courage and went back to, um, to Wilmington and finished the film. Um, you know, I applaud them for their courage. They asked me to come back, and I couldn't do it. Real love is forever. Because of the disturbing events surrounding the film, another hurdle facing the producers was finding a distributor for the dark movie. Miramax, the company which distributed The Crying Game and Like Water for Chocolate, accepted the challenge of selling the film to moviegoers. Certainly, you can't overlook what has occurred as a producer, and you simply seek to not exploit that. If that brings people to the movie, it's unfortunate that that is what it would take to bring them. But I think once they see the movie, it'll stand on its own. And certainly, there is a macabre aspect. Uh, there may be people who, you know, are curious. But I have had greater concerns that we overcome the negativity in the press and the work gets to stand on its own. And uh, we are just proud that we've done a, a tasteful, first-class, A-plus production. The Crow opens in wide release on Friday the 13th. We'll take a short break and be back with much more as Showbiz Today continues in a moment. Please stay with us. The Nanny Tells All, an inside look at life with Woody and Mia, and how to own a piece of the real Elvis as Showbiz Today continues. CNN Entertainment News, New York. This week's other big box office success story almost didn't make it to theaters at all. When actor Brandon Lee died a few days before completion of the action film The Crow, the future of the film was put in doubt. But the special effects wizards at DreamQuest Images met tragic necessity with spectacular invention, as Dennis Michael reports. DreamQuest Images, veterans of the advanced special effects field, was already working on the motion control and composite shots for The Crow when Brandon Lee died in a fatal onset accident. Soon, the producers came to the special effects wizards with an unprecedented request. Could the missing shots in the film be digitally created? They were at a point where, in the filming, that they needed to be able to tell the audience, um, weave a thread through the story of telling the audience how Eric Draven, the character that Brandon played, was empowered with the abilities he, he had, um, and how to tell the audience um, certain key points. DreamQuest crossed their fingers and said they could and began weeks of painstaking work to build the shots out of odd raw footage. An unused exterior shot became one necessary element. The background plate that we were asked to remove Brandon from, there's actually rain, a lot of green light. Brandon is walking towards camera and in fact uh, it's a handheld camera. The shakes were removed, green colors corrected, the image lifted out of its background, but the rain called for a little artistic license. In the running footage, you'll actually see, as is here, a little streak of raindrops. Um, those are not on the set. Uh, we're basically implying here that Brandon's apartment has a leaky roof. Another shot had Brandon looking into a shattered mirror. What we had to do was isolate Brandon, and since the original plate was handheld, we steadied it, uh, changed the color, and then we used what we call a displacement map to try to get the sense that he was uh, reflected in a fractured mirror. 
And eeriest of all, Brandon Lee's face was digitally placed over the body of a stand-in, so his face would be illuminated by flashes of lightning. We color correct it and we position it where we want to, like so. The irony is, some of the techniques that were advanced on the Crow may make it possible in the future to create even more spectacular stunt shots at smaller risk to actors. We can now plan for throwing trained professionals um, out of a moving plane or do other things that allow a director to tell a story without worrying about uh, did we see the body double's face, did we see, uh, because we can treat those uh, things in post and everything is achieved better I think and more seamlessly if you can control it and plan it up front um, and that's really the impact of this. And Brandon Lee's final film was released intact and on schedule. Dennis Michael, CNN Entertainment News, Hollywood. Still to come, he helped start the country music comeback. Now Randy Travis makes a comeback of his own. And we'll take a behind-the-scenes look at good advice as Showbiz Today continues.